everybody. Welcome back to the Road to Recovery podcast. I am one of your hosts, Ryan, alongside Tommy Kelly, who I didn't realize you have so many people that hate you, Tommy. You should have told me about this. The whole oh, yeah. You should have let me know before we started working together. I didn't want to get dragged Tommy, down. Tommy, they're posted. But anyway, today we're, we're joined by uh, two very, very polar opposite people, Bart K., and Nika, thank you for being here. We got a vegan and a carnivore Thanks, here to have a little friendly debate. Maybe not so friendly. I don't really know how it'll go. I'm gonna try and keep it friendly because it's all about happiness. That's all I care about sometimes. Totally. I'm Hello, probably guys. the only person in the world. Hello, I'm probably the only person in the world who has more people who hates them than Tommy. So probably <laughs> that is what I, I've also discovered recently. So yeah. I know that um, when. Tommy was uh, talking to you, Nika, that you had some points that you wanted to bring up. So maybe yeah. we can start the discussion around some of uh, your initial bullets and then we can get Bart to kind of comment on that. And then we'll just kind of moderate it and keep it, keep it moving forward. Absolutely. Keep it respectful. Now, okay. May I start? Yeah. Uh, hello guys. Uh, first of all, sorry, you cannot see me. Unfortunately, we had some technical issue. We, yeah. mm, so I, we'll, I hope you understand. We'll, we'll, we'll take the blame for that one. I'll take the blame for that one. <laughs> uh, also, I will remind again, because some of you may be hearing me the first time, so I will remind that I'm non-English speaker, so please apologize. Uh, my apologize if um, some vocabulary will find weird. It may happen, especially the, the topics I want to raise today I, are not very basic, are not super easy, and sometimes I may even miss vocabulary. Uh, of course, um, I want oh, to, uh, oh. I have some questions to Bart, obviously. I have already had a chance to talk with uh, Tommy. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, but actually, Bart is uh, the opposite of <laughs> of vegan, yes, of veganism. So, but I have I prepared um, just one basic um, claim which I wanted to discuss with you. But before I start my main topic, uh, can, can, can I'm we get maybe, to address? Can we get a little like a uh, background about like your yeah, history becoming be vegan? Good. And then, and then, and then we can start there, just so people kind of get where you're coming from, where you got to where you are, stuff like that. Just, just to give people a little context that obviously don't know you and things a little bit about yourself, how you obviously yeah. became vegan. Mm -hmm. Okay, I've been vegan pretty short time, just one and a half year. Although never before I had um, eat. I had eaten uh, meat too often, rather occasionally, as I didn't like it. Um, so I only basically I enjoyed uh, meat in a good restaurant. It needed to be prepared very well. I needed a good chief to to provide a good meal. Otherwise, I just didn't like it. So I ate. I used to eat meat rather occasionally. So it was never an uh, important source of my nutrients in my life. I have always loved animals, so uh, so theoretically I should have been vegan much earlier, but in fact I didn't believe I'm gonna make any change. I thought the situation is uh, rather hopeless and I cannot do anything. So um, my, uh, my decision to go vegan was rather related to to noticing some chance to do something. So I combine several forms of veganism and then I hope that it gives some chance because only avoiding uh, meat is, in my opinion, is nothing. Um, okay, and if, who am I? I studied music, um, Japanese language and economy. So I was, my life was basically around uh, showbiz and also I dealt with languages. And I'm Polish, yes. <laughs> I'm from Poland. Awesome. Awesome. That's great. All right. Um, oh. So, but I heard that you, you, you said you were autistic, yes? Yeah. In your last um, interview. So, and you said that um, carnivore diet served you very well but on the other hand you said the only health problem health issue you um, you represented is autism so i understand that the only way to 
from your side to prove that your that carnivore diet serves you well is if for example a vegan like me will tell you some opposite opinion to your uh, to your beliefs and you will show you are flexible enough to admit that i might be right is that okay well, if i see you are less less persistent that means that hmm, maybe this carnivore okay, diet well, 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 well let, let me respond since you've posed the question first of all you say the only health concern that i've spoken about is autism that's actually not correct uh, number one, autism is not a health concern. It's a hard wiring issue from birth. Um, it is it is the way my brain is wired, and it is something that I have learned to deal with. Um, secondly, actually, before going carnivore, I have experienced innumerable actually health concerns. I could I could give you a laundry list of health concerns that I suffered prior to being a carnivore, all of which are now basically resolved coincident with me becoming a carnivore around four years ago so your research into my background there is is a bit lacking there unfortunately um secondly you were talking about opinions and yes that's the thing about opinions the thing about opinions is that they are very much like anal orifices almost everybody's got one and mostly they're full of excrement but please do give uh, us your opinion and I'll, and I'll happily respond to it. There you go. Okay, thank you for your response. Uh, uh, in this case, my apologies. Um, maybe I was not very um, careful in examining your past. Uh, I'm sorry for this. Uh, I, of course, I focus on autism because I have autistic child, so I know how important it is to provide him with a proper diet. I know that diet, in fact, um, affects a lot um, the mental state, and we we must be careful. And um, so th maybe that's why I was so interested. But okay, this is not a topic. This was just an uh, initial question to you. Uh, I also wanted to discuss addressing your last discussion i wanted to address um, your argument about isotope um, analysis uh, first of all could you please uh, remind all the people uh, what elements um, does glucose consist of glucose is carbon hydrogen and oxygen yes so there is no uh, nitrogen in it yes correct there is not Mm -hmm. So why are you using the nitrogen isotopic uh, analysis to uh, to discuss um, the the content of um, paleolo paleolithic people's diet? Well, I'm doing it because that is the accepted methodology in the science, and because what the nitrogen fourteen fifteen isotope testing does is it establishes absolutely and irrefutably the level of protein in that individual's diet that came from an animal source as opposed to from a plant source. And so it, it establishes absolutely the trophic level at which an animal existed during its life. Um, the 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 nitrogen 14, 15 testing establishes that human beings pretty much throughout their 350,000 year history on the planet have been obligate hypercarnivores, gaining upwards of 80% of their uh, caloric energy from animal sources. And that has actually been backed up by some carbon based testing that has been done that corroborates it. I just don't mention that because people that understand the science don't usually need that explained to them. So I hope that that explanation does now make it clear to you. The isotope testing is really not up for debate uh, mm -hmm. in terms of its validity in determining what it is an animal did in fact eat. It is a slam dunk. Uh, okay, may I respond? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Uh, okay, so first of all, uh, nitrogen isotopic analysis uh, exposed what was the main source of uh, 
proteins. In fact, especially Neanderthals uh, were fed uh, mainly by, no, their ba main source of proteins were animals. Yes, that was meat, which doesn't tell us anything about proportion between uh, carbohydrates and animals. So that means um, even if they ate meat once a week and in other days they ate uh, a lot of plants but uh, rich in carbohydrates and um, low in proteins, it still would be the same result because this this analysis only showed we what was the, the main source of proteins, not about food, like all the except, food. Except if you'd listen to what I just said, unfortunately you seem to have missed it. I said it is also corroborated by the carbon-based testing that has also been done. But there are also... Um, some other um, opinions of uh, archaeologists who say that if about those nitrogen analysis they we cannot truly like fully rely on them because according to those analysis people are more carnivore than lions and also deers also appears uh, or, uh, or some her herbivore uh, obviously 100 percent herbivore animals also appear more carnivore than lions so we shouldn't um, make an um, um, you should, we cannot take it too seriously. It's like one of one of arguments which indicates some direction. And of course, there is no doubt that uh, Neanderthals, especially, they ate meat. But we cannot hundred percent take this um, this argument because there are many other um, archaeological research. For example, analysis analysis of um, dental, for example, calculus, which shows microfossils of belly and many other plants, which show that indicate that uh, even grains were uh, widely eaten um, also before uh, agriculture agriculture yes period even before okay so the the existence of some evidence of eating some amount of plants does not debunk the evidence which clearly shows that human beings ate primarily meat Nobody has said human beings ate no plants at all. They did eat some plants. It seems like, depending on where they lived on the planet, the closer to the equator, the more carbohydrate and plant that was in the diet, funnily enough, considering that most mm -hmm. of the planet was frozen for much yes. of the time. That explains that. Uh, the fact that there is some evidence on the teeth of some uh, of some plant eating, uh, the fact that there are one or two coprolites that have been found with plant material in them. It seems like mostly uh, human beings were aware of the medicinal properties of certain selected plants, and that was probably what they were used for rather than as a primary source of energy. Uh, as I say, both the, the nitrogen and carbon testing has been, has been they, they corroborate each other. They are what people like to refer to as converging lines of evidence. They are good, hard science. There is always going to be voices out there in the wilderness who want to try and cast shadow over whatever's out there. And that's fine. They absolutely are, are welcome to put those, those opinions forward. However, at the end of the day, what we have is some very, very convincing evidence as to what it was that historically human beings have in fact eaten um, I'm not sure why you would want to try and debunk it anyway because at the end of the day my understanding was that your moot is that you would like to propose that human beings are supposedly best suited to be herbivorous which is easily debunked so uh, actually, no, no. I have a completely different diagnosis. Uh, I think that um, both of your groups, uh, both like fruitarians and carnivores, for I treat for you, for, for me, you are the same, the same people. And usually, uh, if, you know, fruitarians become carnivores. So for example, let's take Tristan as an example and many other examples we can mention. Why? Because you are the kind of people who believe there is such a thing as a, uh, as a perfect diet for human. 
uh, but there is no such a thing because uh, maybe you think that we were um, created perfectly and that it's only a matter for us to discover what is perfect food and then we can live forever happy and maybe i don't know but the problem is that the primal problem of human is breathing we are dying because of oxygen because of so first of all, you should maybe consider um, reducing breath and do something about it because there is no such a thing as perfect conditions for human to live. Like you will discover perfect diet and all problems are gone. That's not true. So can I, I just can I just biggest... say something, Veganica? Like, yes. are, are you are you are you proposing that people be, actually be vegan because? If you aren't, you're saying that there isn't an optimal diet. So if that were the case, why would somebody have to have the premises that they should go vegan? So I think if you could maybe make that kind of clear, what you're actually proposing there, because it's kind no. of contradicting. No, I'm proposing that we shouldn't um, search, like desperate research for a perfect diet because there is no such a thing. And we should rather react to reality. We should, uh, because you you guys, fruitarians and carnivores, you focus too much on Paleolithic people because fruitarians are also right. Because if you go farther in the back in the history, okay, our ancestors were eating primarily fruit. So they are also right. Both you are right, but, uh, but, so what? We also need to okay, yeah. consider okay. understand, reality. Understand your, okay, thank you. Understand your point very well. Okay. A couple of things I would say in response to it. Number one, fruitarians and carnivores are not the same. Okay, let's get let's make that very, very clear. <laughs> no, no, we're not. Okay. Mentally, Secondly, mentally you're the same. Hang on, hang on. Secondly, mentally we are definitely not the same either. No, that's that's not correct. Is there an ideal diet for human beings? Yes. Is it demonstrable? Yes, if you apply some basic common sense and some basic actual science, some basic actual reality, the thing you were referring to before, the very thing you were referring to in the same breath, for want of a better term, that you were saying that the problem with us, the reason we are dying is because we are breathing? And yes, because of oxygen. Yes, yes. Oxygen is our so huge problem. So we are dying because of oxygen and the solution is we should breathe less, is what you said. S side effects of, of oxygen, yes. And why we need uh, so desperately antioxidants, antioxidants. Uh, antioxidants, is that what you're talking about? Okay. Do you, do you know what the natural design is for the, for the derivement of, of antioxidants as a, as a human being actually is? <laughs> Where are we supposed to get our antioxidants from? Uh, of course, your answer will be different than mine. So of course it <laughs> I will, don't because mine is based on science. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, just for the sake of our conversation, I will try to um, agree that you know the answer, and uh, there is such a thing as ideal diet. I don't yeah. believe, but uh, let's just for the sake of this okay. conversation, I will. But I want to, you to still. I want um, you to confront the reality. Um, right. Well, that's that's what I do every single day as a scientist. <laughs> that's what we do. We look at reality. We 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 analyze reality. We mm -hmm. form hypotheses about what we expect to see, given that if we put a model together of how things work and then we we apply that model to what we actually observe in reality and we see if those things agree so if they do then we've got a good model if, if they don't then we've got a bad model ryan you wanted to say something yeah, no, I, have a, I had a quick question because i think we can all agree that the i guess standard diet that we see in like here in america in our school system that is taught is 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 inadequate to it is the put worst it very polite diet a human being can eat. Mm. Yeah. The standard diet is the worst possible diet that a human being can eat. So that's why I kind of I don't it, it's kind of a double edged sword because I don't I I do believe there are quote more ideal diets. I yeah, they are better, of course, for sure. But actually one thing I wanted to ask before we moved on to a discussion maybe around like polyphenols and uh, all these uh, antioxidant properties in plants and all these things, maybe more questions that you might have or more discussions, let's say you have Nika. Um, but um, 
I wanted to ask what your what both of your thoughts are, and we can start with you, Nika, on the decrease in brain size of the last 10,000 years for human beings, which coincides with the introduction of agriculture. Now, I'm not saying that that's the one and only reason that that has happened. Clearly, we've gone through a warming period during those 10,000 years, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Our lives are very different than they were 10,000 years ago. Uh, the way we consume information and all this stuff, like our lives are completely different than hu as humans. But I, I would like to know your if you have any other thoughts on, on that point. I know Bart probably does, but I was wondering if you had any any points you thought you'd like to make about that at all, because I'm just curious about it myself. You mean the size? Uh, why uh, the size of uh, human brains? Uh, yeah, have shrunken in, in ten thousand. Uh, First of all, thanks to a higher uh, caloric intake, thanks to cooking, you know, um, thermal, um, how you say, it? you know, cooking, fire, yes, fire. Nika, uh, Nika, the question, the question you seem to be answering there is why you think the human brain got bigger. The question that you were asked was why do you think in the last 10,000 years the human brain has got smaller? coincident with the introduction of agriculture did you understand smaller that? smaller yes, yeah. yeah it's correct uh, so it's i haven't heard gone. about it that it became smaller yeah, yes it's, it's statistically gotten smaller uh, maybe comparing to neanderthals i heard that neanderthals had no, bigger race is yeah, that what you mean no no Neander um, it's not human it's beings. Actually, yeah it's actually been it's actually a, a proven maybe thing. we and don't our, use some uh, some functions we used to use before yeah. Nika, do you understand that Neanderthals are a different species? They were not human beings. Yeah, and I wanted to talk about it because, uh, you know, those eyes, are but I, I'm waiting for my time to, because I wanted to read for you um, a part of an interesting article which I wanted to discuss. Um, yeah, go for it. Go for it. Yes, can I? I also, yeah, sorry ahead. for you guys. So um, I also need to explain to you, I don't understand 100% of you are, what you are saying. Maybe I understand 80% and totally. I need to focus totally. what you are totally. saying. Totally. Yes? That's, that's why totally. I was trying to help you out with the last one. Just to mm. Don't, don't sure worry about right it. Yeah, your English is yeah. really, really good. Just go with you're it. Doing if, fine. You any kind of, if you've got any struggles, just like ask us again and we'll, re we'll do it again for mm -hmm. you. Yeah, you're doing fine. Yeah. Mm, thanks. Um, okay, so there is a comparison of uh, modern human mainly. So we are talking about Homo sapiens to Neanderthals, and uh, it explains um, it's about this uh, nitrogen isotope um, analysis that mainly uh, it was proven that Neanderthals um, their main source of protein was um, were animals. So uh, modern humans may well have had a broader dietary spread than Neanderthals, but we need to, uh, mm, um, uh, it is uh, non, nonetheless uh, clear that modern humans in the relatively short period covered uh, by the study, so starting from 40,000 uh, to 27, a thousand years uh, before Christ, yes, were exhibited a wide range of diets, while the Neanderthals seem to have had the same general dietary adaption throughout a much longer period of time. Why do we see these dietary differences between Neanderthals and uh, Homo sapiens in Europe? It is tempting to see the difference as being somehow cognitive uh, in that Neanderthals were unable to alter their subsidence strategies, whereas modern humans were more creative and were able to exploit resources more than the Neanderthals. Um, however, the difference need uh, not be cognitive and instead an increased flexibility. So flexibility was the factor which uh, made um, Homo sapiens survive, while Neanderthals who were less flexible, more stuck to their one optimal diet, which were yeah, predominantly uh, meat, they extinct. So this was what I wanted to discuss uh, with you mainly, that uh, in my opinion, uh, we 
we are in a similar situation that uh, it's a matter of our extension or not, uh, survival or not, whether we we become more flexible and more creative um, uh, the, or we are stubbornly persistent and, you know, stuck to the same diet. Like, uh, I think uh, our food industry sucks that's my opinion and i think we should uh, we should provoke um, and uh, challenge uh, food industry to be more creative because uh, we may face huge problems and i'm afraid that guys like you who are promoting a very narrow diet just based on meat um, such guys are doing a very bad job for humanity so that's my you stop um, you stop uh, our um uh, the progress that's i do agree we should challenge the food industry i i mm -hmm. i agree with that but bart mm -hmm. uh, let's have you yeah no you. My, my response is along similar lines and it is absolutely i agree with you the food industry is absolutely criminal absolutely abhorrent mm -hmm. the food industry oh. is at its root responsible for almost all the woes of western society in terms of our health challenges because it is the food industry which funds the nutrition education industry education and in inverted speech marks it is the food industry who are the devil incarnate um, with regard to human health and well-being. Secondly, I will agree absolutely with your other point that one of the factors, if not the most important factor, that has led human beings to be the predominant species on this planet in terms of at the absolute top of the food chain, at the absolute top of, uh, of everything pretty much on the planet, is our adaptability is our ability to adapt to change and to survive or subsist when we uh, required it. Yes, we absolutely did outmaneuver the Neanderthals. Yes, we did probably kill the Neanderthals off. Yes, we probably ate them, to be fair with you. Um, those that didn't die off of their own accord, a number of them would have been eaten by human beings uh, as well. Um, so yes, I'll absolutely agree with all of that stuff. However, where your logic falls over is that what you're now doing apparently is conflating adaptability with therefore a mixed or varied diet is indicated for human health. That's a completely inappropriate conflation because, as I said before, there is an ideal diet for human beings. Human beings have evolved over 350,000 years existence on this planet in a specialist niche. Yes, we are adaptable. Yes, we can step outside that niche when we need to survive. Yes, we are able to survive events that other animals are not because of our intelligence, because of our ability to use language, because of our ability to use tools, because of our opposable thumb, because of our large uh, brain capacity, all of those kind of things. Yes, absolutely. Nonetheless, we are still a specialized species. There is an appropriate and, and ideal diet for human beings, and it is obligate hypercarnivore. All the logic points that way. All the organ systems point that way. All the biological systems of importance point that way all the science, the actual science, points that way. I, I will skip uh, those arguments because I want to focus on other arguments. And um, first, I hope you agree that a uh, human is able to survive as a vegan, uh, which I am a proof of, for example, and there are, you see, many, many proofs around. So do you agree that a human is, can survive and can live a healthy, happy life as a vegan? Okay, the, first, the first part of that, the first part That's... before the comma, yes, you can subsist as, as a vegan and you can subsist as a vegan for a significant number of years. Yes, the human body is a robust system. Yes, its ability to cope with abuse and not die is incredible. However, the part after the comma, healthy and happy as a vegan, that is not possible long term. 
that is only possible for a short period of time until the deficiencies inherent in that diet kick in and your health basically becomes desolate. Your health will completely abandon you. Tommy, can I ask something? Could I ask something there, but when you're talking yeah. about how the, the vegan diet obviously help, declines people's health, what, yeah. in your opinion, is the nutrients that they're missing in the diet, and what do you think it is that's making that decline so fast? Because we seem to see that it's around about the five-year mark that people seem to kind of fall off. Why do you think yeah. that is? And then, of course, uh, Nika, we can hear your rebuttal to that. Yeah, okay. that's so, good. It, again, this is an opinion because I was asked for an opinion. It seems to me that the one nutrient that is vast, well, there are a number of nutrients that are definitely demonstrably lacking on a vegan diet. We could talk about B12, we could talk about retinol, we could talk about all sorts of things, but the one macronutrient that is clearly a problem for vegans is the lack of adequate intake of saturated fat. It leads to a thing called the rabbit starvation um phenomenon it leads to vegans wasting away their muscle mass wastes away their bone structure wastes away their collagen wastes away they end Why up looking like walking skeletons within five or six years and their health completely completely deserts them at that point um basically the reason for it is human beings are biologically absolutely designed to exist and to thrive primarily on saturated animal fat. And but why do you say that there is no saturated fat in plants? Because if, for example, I, did I not use- say that. Don't put words oh, in my body. mouth. I didn't say there is oh. no saturated fat in, in, in <laughs> okay. plants. I said there is insufficient. Mm, it, it's up to you how much you take it, because if I use, um, on daily basis, I use coconut oil, is uh, almost 100% saturated fat. And Absolutely. Do you have and then, if you, and then if, you, if you took in enough saturated fat on coconut oil, mm. then what other nutrients are you going to be lacking if that's the basis of your diet? Because then you're not taking in all the other nutrients that you're going to also get from meat. Mm. Okay, you mentioned uh, vitamin B12, and this is also something... Um, I think that maybe it's also um, what yeah that's what I want to discuss because I said that uh, food industry sucks because for example we know that the the best source of vitamin B12 are is uh, water lentils which is also the source of one of the best um, proteins best high quality proteins in the world uh, its digestibility is 0 0.98 while digestibility of for example beef is 0 0.94 so it has better quality of um, of protein it has a lot of calcium iron everything and it's um, the most um, bioavailable form of uh, because it consists of all uh, forms of vitamin Twelve, and it is the only uh, source uh, next to bacterial pro uh, products. Um, so it's the only natural source of vitamin B12. So I, I missed what you said. It was that you were talking about there at the beginning. Which which it was water. Talking I was about, about water. Well, water lentils, which is the best right, source of vitamin B12, and also the, the best quality of protein at the same time very rich in proteins mm. and yeah. if people were not relied on meat that much they it would force them to be more creative so i hope if there was okay well, tell you shops, what. maybe i would be able to get a meal dish made of uh, water lentils okay well why don't, why don't you try why don't you do an n equals one and, and tell us how that goes in a few years why don't you eat enough of of the water lentils to get all your protein needs and all your vitamin b12 needs every day and report back to us in five years how you're going because I'll tell you how you'll be going very, very badly. Have a look at what else is in water lentils. I know there is uh, much oxalates. I know it. And, and, what else? About it. and what else? Not just oxalates, heavy metals. Why heavy metals? If you can have it, because, uh, you can. They're in there because the plant absorbs them and, and stores them. But to absorb, so to absorb, you mu it must have a source of absorption, but you can you can grow them at home. It's very easily, you know, to, you can grow well, them at home. Nonetheless, so nonetheless, what I'm suggesting to you is if you think you can get sufficient 
protein and sufficient vitamin B12 from water lentils, why don't you go ahead and do that and report back to us in five years how that went for you? Why? Because uh, there, there is no such a supply in my country. And this is what I'm angry about. Because if I go to my shop, there is only meat and dairy. And next uh, next aisle is chips and beer and chocolates ch and, you know, uh, sweets, cookies. And that's it. What the, What is in our shops? And... And this is a huge problem. It's a much bigger problem than that people are really aware of because uh, even currently crises show us that we cannot rely on it, but there is nothing else. And uh, if the day comes when uh, people realize that we cannot, just we cannot for a very serious reason, we cannot breed animals anymore, um, it would be a dramatic situation because people are not used to, we don't have culture of diversity of food. And people are not used to, for example, me, I wish I had a meal. For example, I wish to have a dinner of uh, uh, water lentils, but there is no culture. So I have no idea what to do, how to prepare, why I cannot go to the shop and buy a burger made of, for example, water lentils or anything you know there is no culture we miss culture we must start being creative and start creating variety of dishes because we know only how to make you know schnitzel or uh, how to make you know scramble eggs people have for example even me who i am a vegan and but there are you know there are twenty thousand edible plants on the planet, but we are. But ninety percent of supply is made of uh, made by uh, only twenty species, and 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 yet I don't know how to make a dinner of many of them. So so I buy a, a vegetable and I don't know how how to prepare because there is no. I'm sure. I'm really surprised. Uh, Nika, that you're suggesting that there's no culture out there for veganism and for vegan food preparation and for vegan options such that they are. Very I think poor. there's a massive, massive amount of information out there. It, you just do a search on YouTube and you will find channel after channel, video after video, page after page of people telling you all about how to do vegan and how to do it right. Recipes. Recipes yeah. for people who yeah. are free have, uh, you yeah. know, don't work. For people who don't work, who just have uh, time or who are passionate about cooking, yeah, well, how about that's busy one of the people? problems with the vegan diet, isn't it? I that's think one of the problems problem. with it. It's yes, not realistic. I wish, yeah, I wish there was dishes in the shop. For example, yeah, no, everybody has. Uh, I'm working. I don't have well, so that's much. A market, time. That's a market forces driven thing, isn't it? The, probably the reason that there isn't a whole bunch of, of, of ready made things like that available is because there isn't a market for it. I wonder why. I'll tell you why. It's because 84% of people who ever start being vegan quit. Yeah, exactly. They do that within they five years, and 90% no of supply. those people, excuse me, and 90% of those people cite catastrophic health failure as their reason for quitting. That is a dying ideology. Exactly, because there is no reasonable, you know, offer. Here, here, here's my question, I guess. About our, I guess this is the one thing that kind of stumps me around around certain aspects of, of veganism. And it's mostly, I'm not, I'm not a complex dude. I, I don't need to have recipes to make things. I don't, cooking is kind of whatever to me. I enjoy it, but I don't, I don't need to make a display of things. And I just like put food in a pan. And that's like basically all I need, right? Exactly. Like, so, mm -hmm. so, so well, I'm going to see Ryan ch ch challenging Gordon Ramsay anytime soon. That's for sure. Hey, I love Gordon Ramsay. That man <laughs> is hilarious. But anyway, but um, but I guess my question is, to me, it's all about going back to evolutionary based eating. And when you were like ten thousand years ago, beyond that, you didn't like. You didn't need, you didn't have recipes for stuff. You just kind of ate, right? So I, I, I guess my question is, I feel like vegan, and it's not just like vegans. It's, it's many different philosophies. They make it too complex. Like it's not a complex. Thing. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. They, they do that, Ryan, so that they can tell you you did it wrong when you fail. And I'm saying if, if, if it was that hard, how did we get this far? Exactly, because the food industry sucks. That's what I'm saying. We don't have a reasonable offer of, you know, full in, rich in nutrients, healthy, but, but as, you know, as, food. But as, food. As, meat. But as, developing, as developing humans, as, as humans, you know, coming up, 
we didn't have stores. We didn't, we had to, we hunt, we gathered. We didn't have, we didn't have options back then really more than, we have way more options now than we did then. It's so I, I guess I just don't understand how evolutionary, evolutionarily it makes it a superior way of eating because it, it just doesn't make any sense to me as far as that notion goes. If, um, does that make sense? I'm kind of all over the place. A little he, bit mind. This is also what I'm suffering about because I have time every day. I am providing one good meal to me and my son. We are both vegans. So mm -hmm. I once a day I cook a meal dinner, but I'm fine. So aside of that, I will eat some bread which I know is not optimal, uh, you know, food. But my son is kind of suffering because he's, uh, he wants to eat a lot. So he eats my dinner, some hours he's hungry and he's like, what should I, eat? he goes to, to the shop and he's so frustrated, so angry because there is nothing for him except for cookies or, yeah, because there is no offer. So I, I fully understand vegans who go back to eating uh, meat because maybe they don't have uh, their whole days to spend in the kitchen and prepare their dishes uh, and uh, it's not good because also you know we have a very very poor offer in my country if about vegan dishes and they are not very you know healthy they are based for example on gluten very often which many people are trying to avoid so we don't have you know healthy dishes we we don't take advantage of all those edible plants and there is no variety of vegan foods and we are I would say deep in in the S as the humanity because of this, because you know uh, you know the current situation. I don't know should I say it, uh, should I name it, or better to avoid those words because they are um, they are censored by YouTube. What do you think, guys? Should I s say the proper name, or you know what situation I mean? Oh, you mean the the pandemic. Yeah, the, this word. This is the word yeah. I was trying to report. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So, um, okay. So there is pandemic, uh, and we are um, we are expecting obviously the next pandemics from coming from meat industry in Poland uh, this year. Um, aside so, of this so, pandemic, so. we also had bird flu and uh, ASF. So our, for example, our farms, pig farms, already bankrupted. And this is the situation we should talk about it, but not so, only. So, so maybe, maybe Bart on that point, cause that's a, that's a lot of stuff. Maybe Bart, um, you can talk about, uh, well, you can talk about whatever you want about that really. Um, right. but I, I, I mainly had the thought around, um, cause, cause the factory farming is a problem, but sure. we could talk about regenerative, uh, regenerative agriculture, stuff yes. like that. And yeah. uh, and your thoughts on the whole animal and and uh, the c right, word okay. so the c word that we for, can't say. <laughs> okay, yeah, fine. Okay, so first of all, there is not a pandemic occurring on our planet. That is a fallacy. Statistically, mm. it cannot be supported. Evidentially, it cannot be supported. What is going on here is an attempt by the elite, the powers that be, to exert control over the masses and to teach and train us to comply. There is no pandemic. Furthermore, there is no diagnostic test available which can reliably distinguish who is and who is not infected with such a virus. Thirdly, such a virus has not yet been adequately described according to Rivers' postulates. Yes, there is a virus. Yes, it exists. No, it is not any more threatening than the common flu. In fact, it's less so, especially when you consider that the number of flu deaths that have occurred on this planet and being reported since March of 2020 has miraculously and mysteriously become near zero, <sighs> along with many other causes of death as well. It's an absolute complete have. So there's that. Secondly... Such a virus does not come from the animal industry. There's no evidence for that either. Thirdly, factory farming is bad. I agree. Regenerative farming properly done on proper and open pasture land is indicated, is appropriate, uh, is absolutely fine. I think that covers it. 
All right. So, so I, you're I, coming, I can't. I can't. You're from, can't, you are from you, uh, United States. I hope you your observation is different because unfortunately, in my country, the situation is super dramatic right now. I no. I totally. I totally people understand. People are really I, dying. I, All I, people I, around. I have. Yeah. Um, I have family in Europe. I I just spoke to my my cousins who live in in England, and they're. They're like spiking right now as well. So I'm, I'm going to keep my they're opinions being, on that. Right, and they're myself. being told they're spiking. That's what's being reported in the media. There is no evidence for it. Okay, right. we have a lot of this. And, and we you will. Nika, have you visited Nika? Have you visited the emergency department yourself? Have you gone there? Have you seen what's happening? So I'm yes, gonna, today. I'm yes, to, my my son today had taken. Uh, he was, uh, you know, he was tested today for um, against COVID because. That's and not you what know you are asking. Means... I ask you whether you have been to the emergency department yourself and seen people dying all over the place in the hallways. Yes, I, the many many my, absolute my, nonsense. So no, many no, no, many, no, no. many let, members, let, family members of my friends have even on Friday, um, one family member of my friend died. Like every almost every family I'm. Contact with everybody has sick people. We have almost a million people it's sick terrible, right now. I'm sorry about and that, but at the end of the day, people die all the time. So let's shift this conversation a little bit because this is getting into some weeds that well, none of us will ever agree on. Are which is uh, not, it's just like a whole nother sect of weeds that is away from the the problem. I do think there is an interesting uh, question within that, and that is in America, I believe it's like eighty percent. It might be a little more. 80% of Americans are metabolically unhealthy, which plays into Correct. all of these current problems that we have going on and making them more extreme than they could be. That's partially due to what we would both agree is a Western style diet. We and even agree so, that. statistically, they are not particularly yeah. extreme. The death uh, you rate, know, you will the not get rate, excuse me, The death um, rate from all causes this year is no higher than any other year. In Poland, yes. 80% higher. In the world, across, across the world, everywhere in the world, the death rate, the reported death rate from all causes is not elevated this year with respect to any other year. In fact, it's behind. Less people have died this year than last. I hope uh, all our listeners will check statistics by themselves because European Union statistics show something completely different, especially my country. You will, it's no, even they don't. Huge... No, they don't show That's... that, Nika. No, they don't. I'm sorry, they don't. So maybe I have some huge problem with my eyes then. Because I, I, will, I, will really... let, I will let the audience go and uh, do their research. Yeah, themselves. yeah, please, <laughs> please, guys, check check statistics. I... There are statistics available from U European Union. If I could, if I could actually come on in, Tommy. Are you frozen again? No. Mm. But okay, oh, but um, okay, but do you deny a bird flu as well? What do you mean there do I is deny such bird flu? because you deny uh, the existence of COVID. So how about no, I bird didn't. no, no? Again, don't put words in my mouth. I did no such thing. COVID does exist. Absolutely, it exists. I never said it doesn't exist. Ah, so you said that uh, people are just the test. The testing is wrong. Yes, that they I have diagnosed. No they are diagnosed COVID. as COVID, but this Correct. is not. This is what you are saying. Yes, I'm saying the test that they are using is completely scientifically invalid. It is incapable of determining whether someone is infected with COVID or they are not. So I have a question then. A I have a yeah. question then to just kind of bring it back to the the main argument around uh, around diet and stuff. For someone that let's say catches it. Who do you think has a better shot of getting out of it, be, being vegan or being uh, on a carnivore-based diet? This is kind of question I would really love to, uh, to avoid. You know why? Because too many people are manipulating with this. I hate this. People are not because people are not honest. Somebody wants to advertise, for example, raw diet. So he say, "Oh, I had a, a horrible cancer. I started eating. I started eating raw, and now I'm healed, completely healed. Now I don't have this." People are cheating. I prefer people to be honest. If you have the virus, say you have the virus. If you have cancer, please say you have cancer. I would like to, you know, appeal to all people. Please I'll stop go. cheating. Yourself. What are you saying, Tommy? I will. I will say as well, on my opinion on it, 
Obviously, I lost one of my friends to it. He was extremely fit and healthy. Oh, yeah. He was only 39 years old. What actually happened with him is he was working over in Dubai. He came home for his 40th birthday. He took what he thought was the flu. And then the next two days later, his lungs collapsed and things like that. It was definitely COVID, so they say. So I think as well, it probably comes down to how healthy you were before you actually caught COVID. But... Did he have something in the past that they didn't know about? I don't know. So, mm. yeah, I think it's got a lot to do with your health at the, the time, really. Yeah. I'm really sorry to hear about that, Tommy. It's a terrible thing when somebody dies for any reason, especially unexpectedly. There is a virus going around. It does kill a small percentage of people that are infected with it. A small percentage. Mm. I'm not saying it doesn't exist. I'm not saying nobody is dying at all. I'm saying the death rates around the world are completely normal. This he, year, he is right about year. statistically, it is pretty low when you look at like the numbers per people that get infected. It's not like it's not like a movie. It's not like the movie. Uh, I think it's Contagion. Yeah, it, it's nothing like that. But um. Mm. People do react to it differently based on their predispositions, etc. Yeah. Mm -hmm. May I continue my argument? Yes, yes. Okay, because COVID was just an example, but right, I, right, no, I hope exactly, you, yeah. Yeah, I'm with yeah, you. Because I hope you agree that uh, bird flu has a, a high, very much higher um, death rate than COVID. And you know that in Poland, we had also bird flu this year. Um, in 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 many places, not only so we had we have COVID, or right now we have a very dramatic, very very dramatic situation in Poland, and um, many many people dying. But that's not the topic. We had also bird flu, and we also have African swine flu, which uh, devastated our um, family farms. So we don't have um, family, you know, pig family farms almost anymore only biggest factory you know industrial farms survived because the, the, they are richer they can afford the damage uh, so um, and uh, now it reached germany so uh, this african swine flu is is a big uh, problem in europe but we had also uh, you know bird flu which is uh, very dangerous for human and what i want to say wh what is my claim that um you guys who are promoting meat are giving giving away um the cheap cheap weapons to every crazy person now ev absolute now nonsense complete nonsense so, yeah, respond to that one yeah nonsense so, so it's, just, it's just rambling this this we've got completely away from diet here yeah we we've that is true. Yes, yeah, we have we have excuse me excuse me i am speaking We've been talking about all sorts of different viruses, none of which have anything whatsoever to do with diet. You've been rambling on in an incoherent fashion. I know English is not your first language. That's not the issue here. The logic is incoherent. What is your argument? My argument is that if um, that one day we might be, as humanity, we might be forced to stop animal agriculture because uh, it will be a, a question of uh, human survival. For so example, that, because well, of pandemic. So, 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 so I understand. And I understand, terrorism. So I understand your, your main argument. Uh, basically, you're worried about disease from factory farming and stuff like that, right? I wanted to talk about terrorists. Yeah, that's, that's, okay. Oh my God. Well, well, that, that, that's, yeah, that's, okay. That's, well, that's, exactly. that's, that's, like, that's like way. That's way out of the realm. Want, no, no, if no, somebody no, wants no, to, no, 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 no. first sign of vegan no, decline. No, 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 no. First, first listen, sign listen. of vegan decline is a complete inability to hold a logical thought pattern. Are and you able to listen to nonsense? So yes, I I would agree with you that there is an issue with the way we do do agriculture, such as monocropping such as um, yep. the way we do factory farming. The way we've set up yep. the system mm -hmm. is very flawed. I do agree with that. Yes. And Absolutely. I do agree that it does allow disease to spread among animals much more easily when they're such in, in, in closed spaces and are unhealthy. They're generally unhealthy. Like I've seen ducks that are literally force fed. It's you know, horrible. Through, and Tommy, it's horrible. So yeah, it is. that's why I brought up the idea of regenerative farming because I do believe that that is somewhat of a, I don't want to say cure, but cure to this issue. 
in a lot of ways because you even need it with 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 um, growing plants because monocropping destroys the soil that you're growing plants on and everything becomes much more nutritionally insufficient. So how do you solve that? Well, when you have animals graze on these pastures, they help refertilize the soil by the excrement, et cetera. So it's kind of, it's a system that needs to work within itself. You can't remove part of that and have it one-sided either way, if that makes sense. Totally. It's and there are ways, and there are ways to do regenerative farming. And there are ways to do regenerative farming. It's been written about extensively. So I do agree Alan that, Institute, I think, as well. Yeah. Could I, could, I actually, could I actually interject a little second, right? There you go Somebody, for it. one of our subscribers have actually commented on the our YouTube channel and they're actually asking if I could ask Bart and, Vig and Veganica a question. It's basically they want to know, can you obviously get Bart and Veganica to talk about the, the role of fiber in the diet if they believe it is necessary and if it's got any benefits around colorectal cancer or do you believe that this is obviously just false propaganda and do you believe that diet plays a, a role in insulin? Okay, so you want uh, just to go back to moderate topics. I can talk about fiber, but I hope you we will face and we will confront the uh, the problem of bioweapon, which um, I just I we just think we're going to enter a space where we go around in circles and we're going to lose the audience completely in all of these other weeds. So I'm trying to keep it yeah, simple maybe, for the audience's sake. Maybe if. I was thinking maybe if we do a separate episode where we maybe talk I'll about separate. the other, yeah. other side, yeah. Okay. If, we base, if, we, if, we, if we base this one around the diet and the nutrition at the moment and then we move on to that in the next one, so we're, we're okay. not going to lose track time. here. Yeah, All let's right. do that. Let's do that so we just stay focused. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Fiber. For me, fiber is life saving. You know, I if I had any problem at all, health problem. Basically, I'm. I don't have health problems. I am basically healthy person. But I suffered constipations for most of my life. So I was. I don't know what is the elegant word in English. Uh, I will behave not elegant as a lady. I would say I was. I used to shit once a week. <laughs> well, yeah. Totally uh, what understand. is the elegant word? Please teach me. Uh, How should I say? I think that's pretty accurate. That, that's, <laughs> that's, that's pretty, pretty important. Pretty accurate. Yeah, so you don't important. have any that's better good. words. You yeah, don't you have any better say, words. That, sadly, that's like, probably I the moved, word I would use. I moved my bowels once a week. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that, that, that's like <laughs> a bell movement. That, okay. That's more of the same. Frankly, scientific we, we appreciate directness here, I think. And, yes. and just to say, look, I had a shit once a week is absolutely on point. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so before it, it was a problem. It was not actually. It was very, very painful. So sometimes I was even losing my conscience while in toilet. It was so painful, and I think in a longer run it would be. It might have become dangerous for me. Uh, maybe in future I would develop some I don't know some bowel cancer or something. But uh, fortunately, yeah, it disappeared with um, this problem disappeared with a vegan diet. So I have some um, health obvious health the benefits of uh, increasing amount of fiber which doesn't mean that uh, um, the vegan diet is automatically providing me with enough of this i still even being on a vegan diet i still must like calculate like not all the foods are rich in uh, fiber for example if you take rice or uh, there are many things which are not rich so i still must like think um, okay if one day i don't have much fiber it's okay but i i still must be careful to provide um, um, sufficient amount of fiber and for me it's life-saving so oh, I'm, I'm glad that you've been able to get over that i'm glad that you found something that has helped you but i can also i can kind of i've read uh recently some studies about fiber um carnivorous diets vegan diets with with fiber and constipation and i can uh tommy can probably attest to the fact that fiber actually didn't improve improve any of those things for his gut um, mm -hmm. and, I, think, and things. I would say that what I actually know, I don't know a lot about it, but the only study right. I know that actually exists on fiber, actually when they, 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 they reduce fiber out the diet, people's constipation actually improved. Yeah, that's, so, that's what I wanted to, to bring up. And I know because I know Bart was going to talk about it. 
at some point. Mm -hmm. But but what are what are your thoughts on on the whole constipation thing too? Because that is a big argument against uh, carnivore eating or just in in general not eating fiber. Just it sounds insane when you talk to somebody about it, right? I yeah. know various like, people. Some some people, you know, for example, me, I need a lot of fiber, a really huge amount of fiber, then I'm fine. But for example, my mom doesn't and she doesn't have such problems. So I, I see that people are different. And I know yeah, that, okay. for example, if someone has SIBO, it's even uh, maybe dangerous for him, then he shouldn't. Uh, so I know that not everybody is the same uh, if about fiber. Mm. Okay, please, Bart. I'm not uh, okay. from from a scientific point of view. Bites me yeah, so much. Yeah. From a scientific point of view, using the actual data that is available, such that it is the actual empirical evidence, such that it is, I can tell you with absolute surety that the exact amount of fiber required by human beings in their diet is none at all, not one gram ever. Um, basically. As, as I was saying, yeah, yeah. there is one and one only study available on this topic. It is the one that the boys have already referred to. It was a smallish sample size, but it is the only study where they remotely well-controlled people in a locked-in metabolic ward situation. And what they found is across that population of people, there was a progressive improvement in all their constipation and bowel dysfunction symptoms which was a straight line relationship between that and the amount of fiber that was was removed from their diet to the point where the people who had all the fiber removed from their diets, all of those people experienced a 100% regression of all their bowel dysfunction symptoms. That's the only study we've got. That's the only evidence we've got that is of any value to look at. Now, everybody's got their own anecdotes and they can say, well, I ate lots of fiber and I feel much better. That's fantastic. You keep doing that. However, you're also saying, you know, I've got clear benefits from my from my my vegan diet so far, which in the first year and a half or so is, is entirely in line with what we would expect. As I said before, in the first few years of your vegan diet, you will experience some improvement over the standard diet. Absolutely. However, it will not last. Speak to us again when you've been vegan for between five to seven years. And you will be most likely one of those 84% of people who will be coming to us saying, I was wrong. Veganism is not the answer. I am quitting. And the reason I am quitting is because of catastrophic health failure. I'm sorry, but that's where the statistics are leading us. That is where you will be in about four or five years from now. I hope to meet you guy in about four or five years okay. later. <laughs> I, I hope you quit veganism before that because I really would have you not go through the suffering that you will go through. I would have you not suffer what Tommy suffered. I would have you not suffer what Ryan suffered. I would I would save you that that pain and suffering if I could have, if I could get inside your brain and make you understand what I understand and and give you the understanding of where it is you've got this so badly wrong Nika. I would do that in a heartbeat because I don't want you to suffer and you will suffer if you continue with your vegan diet. It will destroy your health and it will be a long road back. So please, you have the opportunity to stop it and to stop it right now. I would take the opportunity. Okay. Okay, thank you. Hey, I'm not going to fight for fiber. No, totally, totally understand. Um, I, I appreciate hearing both of your point of views because I'm just, I'm just thoroughly fascinated by diet in general. And so the, it's, the it's, second, just, it's, it's cool for me to hear two perspectives. The, se the second point was, what what role does diet play in insulin? So, do oh, you yes. do you yeah. think that the, the vegan diet obviously improves it, or do you think the carnivore diet improves it? What kind of evidence is out there, and where does people stand on that? Uh, sorry, I didn't understand you. Uh, were you talking about insulin? Correct. But yeah. what, they're, what they're actually asking is what role do you think diet plays in insulin? Do you believe the, the plant-based diet improves insulin or what's your view on that? Is it a question to me or to Bart? To, to you to begin and then we can... To, you, to you to begin and then obviously Bart will interject with what his beliefs are on that. 
you know, first of all, I'm not that much interested in dietitian because, like I said, I haven't had any health issues. So the only problem in my yes. family is my son being autistic. So I only care about psychoactive substances and how things affect psyche and insulin. That's a problem I'm not really so, too much familiar with so because I, nobody in the family has I any. I would like to ask you as well, when you mentioned obviously psychoactive substances, I remember watching one of your videos and you actually said that you believe that animal foods like meat actually have psychoactive substances in them. Mm -hmm. and you, be you believe that that obviously intensifies autism. Could you give us a bit of scope on what you actually think about that? Yeah, I'm curious. <sighs> Well, it's fascinating. I, I, I was curious. Yeah, I would like. I would like to hear it. Okay, so uh, of course, if you eat, if you eat a lot of beef, you are overdosing phenylalanine, which um, which is very similar in 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 about effect is very similar to amphetamine. So, it, my um, my claim is that. Um, but it's not just my claim and the people on internet are writing about this that meat is highly addictive so people who are craving meat after mm, becoming vegan completely they're unlike addicted. sugar eh, boys completely unlike sugar which is not addictive yeah, at all yeah sugar is also addictive don't don't think don't don't expect me to fight for sugar yeah no, of course. Well, but, but hang on Nikki, you're fighting for a diet the only really important macronutrient in which you can actually access at all is starch and starch breaks down in the bloodstream to sugar yeah but slowly not the no no not at all no fast now you're gonna, speed now you're gonna, in the glucose levels no no now you're going to talk about the gi scale eh? and you say whole grains break down much more slowly than than, than refined sugar and you're wrong because it's Therefore not you need some fiber. if you have some fiber in your diet then yes <laughs> Fiber has no effect. Fiber has what, no effect. I, I think what I'm curious about is is the I guess if we're talking about improving mental health, I've seen I've seen so many people improve their mental health by going on a carnivore based diet and them setting up reduce their depression. Mm -hmm. Also the opposite. I'm, well, yeah, but uh, I'm sure also, you could say that about any diet, really. So yeah, you I, know, I know there's actual like well, I, what, what I would say about obviously mental health and diet, I think it's 50% of each because diet plays a big role, yes, but the other 50% is obviously a neural rewiring, your thought patterns and things like that as well. So I think it's, it's environmental. Diet, yeah, yeah there's, there's a lot to look at there. I, I wouldn't say diet is the all be all and end all, if you know what I mean. No, no, I agree with you. I agree with you totally. I think, I think your environment and your life experiences play a huge role in your mental health as well as like genetic predisposition that you already have. So it's like, it's a very multifactorial thing. I just think, can, it's, can, I, just I, can I address, can I address the original question? Yeah. Yeah. Go for it. Go which for it. is um, of the two diets, veganism and carnivory, which one will net you an improvement in your insulin sensitivity across yeah. time? The answer is both. Both diets will achieve that over the, over the standard Western or standard American diet. Yeah. Um, the worst possible diet you can consume in terms of your insulin sensitivity is the standard diet, and the reason for that is the Randall cycle. There you go. There's the answer. Yeah, mm, cool. I didn't expect cool. that from you. Uh, I appreciate. Uh, but but you know, that's what I do. I do science, mm, and, I, and I talk mm, about what is objectively true. Mm. Uh, may I suggest you something, guys? Because yeah. you you start very important and, in fact, very exciting topic like uh, the effect on psyche. I think many people might be interested in it, and I think it's oh, yeah, not a good sure. idea. Yeah, absolutely. That, that's, that's what we talk about on here. Debate. Nobody will listen to this. We, we can make another debate. Just you know, we may we should decide on a topic because you know, start such absolutely. a topic in the let, end. Let us, let us know, and we'll, we'll we'll set it up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Love to. I, I think we should finish us for today. There are already several topics. Yeah. You want to kind of ring us out, Tommy? Yeah. If you, if anybody want to close on anything. How about let's how about, let's let's do some like just final thought wrap up stuff. Let's and you, Nika, yeah, you can kind of give your final thoughts. Bart, you can give your final thoughts, and then we'll wrap it up and we'll do something again sometime. We can do one totally focused on mental health. I mean, that would be very Absolutely. interesting. Let's I'm very that. fascinated in that. 
Not, um, anything that I can learn would be great. So yeah, Nika, go ahead, take us out. Um, so me, what I wanted to suggest and what I was the only vegan here in this discussion today. So I didn't it's even mean to discuss the, the dietitian's problems with somebody who is dietitian and I'm not. I just wanted to suggest humanity to be more, um, more to become more flexible, to demand more from food industry, to push the, the progress, our progress and flexibility and the readiness, readiness for the situation when one day we might have no opportunity for some other objective reasons some bigger bigger issues than bigger problems than diet itself that one day we might not be allowed to um, breed animals and we are not ready as humanity we may face huge problems and so i want to push progress and us to expect more from food industry that's what was my um, well, I'm all you for know progress i'm all for progress because we're humanity is going to be screwed for several different things <laughs> anyway, i think it would I was just going to say, I think it'll be good to cover in the next one as well. Speaking to Veganica, obviously in my last video, she's really into animal welfareism as well. And I think it's quite a different stance than most vegans actually have because a lot of vegans just totally dismiss animal welfareism. So maybe if we talk a little bit about that in the next one that as well, I think that'd be good I would love to that. touch upon. I would love that. Anyway, so Bart, take us away. Yeah, look, I'm also very keen on on a future discussion. This, this is not a debate. We shouldn't call it a debate. This is a discussion. Um, yeah, a debate absolutely. is a controlled situation. Debate just, with rule. Debate's the yeah. trigger okay. word. It's the trigger right, word. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So what we're doing here is having a discussion, and I would be very interested in a future discussion surrounding uh, mental health as well. I myself suffered vastly throughout the majority of my life from very serious mental health issues. It's one of those things, Veganica, that you would have found out about me had you done the research before this discussion. And I, I am, am now almost in complete remission in terms of my mental health after four years eating a, a reasonably strictly carnivore diet. I'm not perfect uh, by any stretch. I have transgressed. I've had the odd bottle of beer and the odd slice of pizza. I don't mind telling you, but largely I've been eating carnivore for four years and my mental health is now the best it has ever been. Um, along with many, many other aspects of my health, which, uh, again, those that want to do the research into me will see that there's a laundry list of health complaints that I had, which are now in a complete or almost complete remission, coincident with my period as a carnivore eater. Um, people are also directed to look at the actual science, the actual empirical facts around what it is that human beings should eat, whether or not there is an ideal diet for human beings. The answer is yes, there is. Um, and I think the best place that people should go for information about that is my fine, fine, actually science based YouTube channel, where over many, many hours I cover the myriad reasons that underpin the assertions that I'm just throwing out here in a discussion sort of sense. So there you go. That's where people can find. Uh, that's where people can find it. There. I appreciate. Um, I appreciate you both uh, coming on. I appreciate you uh, sharing your perspectives. And yes, it was a it was a discussion. Got kind of. I don't know if it got really heated per se, but it got really. Oh, not really. Yeah, you should have seen some of my passionate. some of my other yeah. passion no. is what we had. But yeah. yeah, no, and I love that. I love that, and I I love the fact that you can both come on and, and talk about what you truly believe in. I think that's what we really need more of is open decorum for that type of discussion. If we are to Absolutely. like you say, Nika, make progress, and I'd love to talk to you, Nika, on on animal welfare. I think that's a really important discussion as well. So I'd love to I'm have you back to. on. I'd yeah. love all to have you both all back on. for animal welfare. So, yes, yes, we can have another discussion another time. <laughs> um, yeah. You you will be able to find both of their links down in the description below, their information. Absolutely, Thank you yeah. guys again, and we'll see you in the next one. Speechless.